Hi, and welcome to our first in a series of live webinars. I hope everyone is keeping well. I'm Christina, the Marketing and Communications Manager at Lucy Walker Recruitment. So I'm just going to run through today's agenda and some quick housekeeping things before I hand over to Lucy Walker and Nat Walker, who are presenting today. Um, so producing a winning CV, CV tips to help you stand out from the crowd. Today, we're going to talk through some uh, short housekeeping bits, and then I'll introduce you to the presenters, who will then talk through today's webinar objective, uh, a brief introduction to the CV, and what employers are looking for, making your CV relevant, the layout and style of your CV, and also the content of your CV. Then they'll look at the language to enhance your CV, then look at preparation for machine learning, Finally, a quality check of your CV and then some questions and answers at the end. So just a couple of housekeeping and um, there will be an opportunity for questions at the end of the webinar. And um, at the moment, we do know that some people are experiencing issues with the chat facility on the webinar. So please send questions through to the email address um, from the, the webinar that we sent out the invite. That's Lucy W at Lucy Walker Recruitment .com. Lucy W at Lucy Walker Recruitment .com. We have had some questions sent through this morning, so thanks so much for those. We'll, we'll come to those at the end of the webinar. Uh, all attendees will be muted during the webinar other than the speakers, and a recording and handouts will be available for those who request them. And also, there will be an opportunity for one to one CV advice with Lucy or Nat if requested to ask some more personal questions in relation to your CV. So I'll now hand over to Lucy and Nat. Hi everyone, I'm Lucy, um, here in my kitchen, like everybody else at the moment. I hope you're all well. Thanks for joining us today. I'm MD at Lucy Walker Recruitment. I've uh, worked in recruitment for 32 years now, um, so during that time I've seen lots of CVs and I um, hope we can help you today by really putting um, a good uh, webinar together to really talk through that um, fantastic CV and how you can get to that point. Hi everybody, um, I'm Natalie. I um, am Client Services Director here at Lucy Walker Recruitment. I've been with the business uh, for the past eight years um, with a total of 15 years in commercial recruitment now. Um, so yeah, we, you know, I feel like CVs are definitely kind of um, work in progress um, and we're going to talk through all of that with you today. Um, so hope everybody's keeping safe and well at this time. Thanks for joining. Okay, so the objective about today, um, so we feel that your CV is one of the most important documents that you'll create. Um, you'll add to it, you'll develop it throughout your career journey. Um, it needs time and detailed thought and really good attention to detail to get it right. And our aim today is to really guide you through that process. Um, just ultimately, so you'll, it will enable you to produce a really high quality document that will give you the best chance um, for every job application and really make you stand out from the crowd. Um, so yeah, that's what Nat and I are, are going to talk through with you today. Uh, thanks, Lucy. Um, so yeah, whether it's kind of three, four or seven seconds, um, you know, it's needless to say, people do not spend um, long looking at your CV. Um, so it doesn't get much of a chance to kind of impress you really need to think about that um, and certainly you know going through today um, just thinking about how you can make that best impression we're going to really help you um, give you some real top tips on that especially because we feel um, you know with um, kind of the uncertainty of what we're going to experience in the recovery phase um, of the current climate um, it's definitely going to be you know I think it's going to increase the unemployment um, rate so it's just going to make the market just all the more competitive for you so it's just really vital um, that you stand out and have that competitive edge um, in the process of being an applicant and using this time to really just take your time to get your CV perfect it's a positive thing for you to be doing at the moment so the next slide what employers are looking for um, so evidence of, of capability for the role um, so this can be outlined in a number of areas of your CV certainly within um, where you talk about your job and your duties and what you're doing um, you can really put evidence in there but also in a key section of the CV which is your personal profile which we'll go on to talk about a little bit later um, but you can really um, put evidence in there of 
of your career history and your duties and your skill set and personal elements as well that can really add to that capability for the role that you apply for. Yeah, um, I think, thanks Lucy, I'll just add into that um, as well. I think another way you can really sort of um, get that evidence across is just through the number of years that you've spent um, within, you know, your specialist sort of sector. Um, so obviously that will be covered off in your career history, but also, um, you know, it's, <clears throat> there's other parts of the CV where you can get across, you know, that you've got sort of five years experience in marketing, um, mm -hmm. for example. And then sort of moving on to the skill side of things, there's just different types of skills, you know, um, there's those kind of transferable skills. So that's things like, you know, um, your written ability, maybe your organisation skills, your attention to detail. Um, these are quite common things that are used within a CV. Um, but then there's, you know, there's things that you can get across about your personality uh, led skills. So uh, maybe how kind of um, tenacious you are. Uh, punctual, reliable, um, maybe strong diplomacy skills, um, enthusiastic, um, all of those things, you know, are really great to get across um, within the CV and that's kind of what employers will be looking for. Um, but I think, you know, the hard skills is really where you can have that impact. So thinking about kind of, you know, your specialist area, so maybe you're in HR, um, so really getting across those key sort of relevant HR related skills. Um, examples of that you might have um, spent time kind of focused on projects um, such as employee um, engagement um, handling surveys for employee engagement you might be a specialist marketeer um, highlighting all of those um, SEO kind of content writing skills anything like that are really sort of hard skills to get across um, same sort of PA you may be accountancy background whatever background you are the, the sort of hard skills really have to be the emphasis of you know, um, your specialism, your specialist area. Um, and then sort of moving on. Sorry, Lucy, I missed that. That's what the recruiters want to see, evidence of those hard skills as well as the soft skills and not just the generic wording, but something that's really specific to you and that hones in to the, to the role. Yeah, definitely. Um, you've got that one opportunity to get it across, you know, on the CV. So a combination yeah. is good but the hard skills are really going to have that sort of impact on why you're good for that particular role. Um, so yeah, initiative side of things. So demonstrating that initiative um, is done through um, words such as kind of leadership, um, maybe you're entrepreneurial um, and you know, you've been able to, you can demonstrate that. I think um, anything like problem solving skills, particularly in um, the climate that we're in, you may have handled um, some crisis management um, to kind of facilitate um, different things like working from home. A lot of people have had that involvement recently. So, um, <clears throat> you know, getting those kind of skills across and highlighting that initiative is really important and um, uh, employers love to see that and there's definitely techniques in how you can get that across and um, so hopefully those couple of examples there um, will help. Fab, thanks Nat. So self-achievement, um, sorry, next. Um, achievements can be listed both within your professional um, experience but also in your personal experience as well. Um, professionally, I saw a CV from a candidate this week that I loved and after each um, list of duties on each job, um, he'd put um, a new subtitle with achievements in there. So just outlining what he'd achieved in each role. And I think he put that in bold. And I immediately, my eye was immediately drawn to that. Um, so yeah. what you've achieved in, in each role, if you've, um, I don't know, increased productivity in certain areas or implemented a new system in a, a certain area, highlight that. This is where you can really highlight your skills. So adding a couple of additional bullet points with achievement for each job is, I think, really helpful. Um, Self-motivation, um, again, many ways personally and professionally that you can highlight that. Um, I've got a friend who I was chatting to this week who's um, been furloughed and she's doing what a lot of people are doing at the moment. She's volunteering um, within the community. So that's a great thing um, to highlight her self-motivation. She's not um, sitting around she's doing something and definitely put that in your CV um, and any personal interest that you've got that highlight how motivated you are um, regular gym goer or some health fanatic hobby of some kind um, and then tenacity is the last one so just really demonstrating that tenacity when you've been really determined in a situation at work and you can give some evidence of that.
um, yeah, they're the things I was thinking of. Fab. Thanks, Lucy. Okay, so next slide is how do I make my theory relevant? Is that right? Yeah. Yes. Okay, back to me, I think. So um, this is a really obvious one, the first one, but really know yourself and your skills and your experience. Um, take the time to just sit down and, and make some notes beforehand about you, about your skills, um, each skill you've maybe gained from different roles and the experience that you've gained, and really take the time to think about it and then how you're going to word it. Um, secondly, know the job that you're applying for. So don't just skim read it, really go through each bullet point of the job description and, and break it down and really understand it. Um, and that will then really enable you to align well to the role and ensure that those keywords within the job spec kind of meet keywords within your CV, which again, we'll, we'll chat about a little bit later on. Um, so yeah, just aligning the two together really. Yeah, I think that's really key because I think, you know, as recruiters, we do see CVs a lot where um, you phone the candidate, they look great, and then suddenly they've not sort of realised the location of the role or something. So, you know, it really is important that you spend that time sort of investing in the job specification, um, but also the company. Um, so if you're, you know, um, applying directly to the company, it's knowing that company, the values, um, and looking through kind of their website you know to get a real feel for that business um yeah. i think in terms of yeah values um are really important they're the backbone of any business that's kind of what they set their sort of culture piece on that's what's really important to them um mm. and i don't think um people often look at that enough really or or maybe they don't see it as as important as it is um, I think it's it's crucial really because you know um, things like uh, integrity of a business you can get a feel for that through their values and um, so it'll just give you more of a flavor of the type of environment and the culture of that business but also looking at the meet the team um, pages um, we had a good example yeah, of that this week didn't we yeah really funny example this week I was on my client website and the meet the team had all of the directors and all of the colleagues as emojis which I just thought was really fun and <laughs> That gives you yeah. an insight into their kind of ethos and their values and some people will love that i love that some people yeah. will, will not like that and prefer something much more professional but um yeah going into that and meeting the team and understanding um, what their culture is like and, and their values is so helpful it gives you an insight as to whether that environment could be right for you or, or maybe not definitely um and also the linkedin page um their linkedin page is really telling and um people spend a lot of time you know updating their sort of careers pages linkedin pages company page um you can get tons of information here now and a background of the individuals that work for that business so again you can get a feel for you know where um their employees have come from previously um so definitely invest that time in researching uh, the company before um you know you sort of submit that cv Okay, so tailoring um, your CV, what I mean by this is, I think there are parts of your CV that you can change for every job that you apply for. So your personal summary, um, we'll chat a little bit more about that as we go on, but your personal summary is a really key piece of information that you may want to tweak for every job that you apply for, and I, I certainly would. Um, so every role you apply for is different and requires different elements. And you may feel that certain elements of your CV are more relevant for some jobs than others. So just really look at your CV every time you send it off, because you might think, no, I'm going to take that bit lower down the page or move that bit further up so that the, the reader will see it immediately. So just tailoring it and tweaking it and making sure that it's as relevant as it can be. Yeah, I think an example of that um, I had this week actually with a candidate who had been in a sort of um, hybrid role, which was sales and marketing or sales, marketing and events. Um, and that person's interested in going for kind of either um, marketing or sales now because they're quite early on in their career. Um, so again, just that tailoring it, you know, to suit um, whichever kind of route that person then decides to take, um, you know, it's just, it's good to kind of think about how you tailor that for the right position and make it as relevant as possible. Yeah. 
Okay, so um, we're coming on to the layout and the style of the CV. So this is obviously really important how it looks and we're going to cover um, kind of a set style, um, what font to use, maybe colour, how much colour to use, um, a number of pages. Um, so the next slide, thanks Nat, very organised. Um, this is an example of a CV that we've done. So you can see that we've done it over two pages. Um, which is great, but you can do three pages if you want. There used to be a, <clears throat> an old fashioned rule that your CV has to be two pages long. It, it doesn't really. If you want to add more detail, put more detail in. This document should represent you as, as much as possible. And I think if you want to put more information in there to highlight skills or experience, then, then do it. Um, we have um, used a font called Calibri Light, um, size 11. Um, which we think is a good font and um, you might have a, a preferred font that you use but that's the one that we've used in the CV um, and then in terms of um, sizing um, again you can differentiate, differentiate different areas with bold with italics uh, with different sizing just to highlight different areas and then colors um, you, I hope that you can see the color we've used a pale blue and white again keep it simple I think too many colors can just take your eyes in different places and, and make it look a little bit messy. So the purpose of your CV is to look slick and, and look as professional as it can be. Um, in the next couple of slides, we're, we're going to highlight um, just a few different areas so that you can see uh, what we've done where and why we've done it. Yeah, so I'll sort of start by talking through contact details and LinkedIn. Um, Lucy will come onto the professional profile. Um, okay, so on the left there, um, contact details um, section, it might seem really obvious, to be honest, um, you know, what to put in there. And of course it is, but um, often people haven't sort of changed their CV in a number of years, you know. Um, so if you ask yourself kind of how, uh, when the last time you changed your CV was, it, it could have been sort of five years ago. So of course, mobile telephone number may have changed. Um, and I've definitely found that in the past, you know, where I've got excited by a CV, I've thought, brilliant, let's give them a call, and the number just doesn't work. Um, and, you know, it just slows the process down, because if you think from an employer point of view, they might have decided to call you and sort of eight other candidates, um, and suddenly they can't get through to you, you could just end up on the bottom of that pile. Um, so just really checking kind of your, your contact details are up to date, email address, um, We've seen a few in our time which you know are a little bit gimmicky yeah. um, and they still crop up don't they like you know just mm -hmm. think about super sarah at hotmail.com is probably not going to be the right thing to put on that cv um so changing that Jane, to something Jane, pardon Jane Lucy? which is great i'm not you know, that Jane loves cakes, but just let's keep it yeah. professional i think Simple. Yeah, definitely. Um, so yeah, LinkedIn at the bottom there. Um, something that's become kind of more apparent um, in recent times, you know, um, with CVs. And we think, you know, it's a great thing to have on CVs. We certainly put it on um, our candidate uh, profiles and CVs. Um, it just allows that employer to kind of have that easy access. So if they've spent, you know, those sort of um, seven to however many seconds on your CV but maybe quite quickly they've decided yeah this all looks great sounds great let's click straight onto that LinkedIn page um you know you've just got to put yourself in the shoes of that employer so again thinking about your profile on LinkedIn um and thinking about the gimmicks again you know if it's um a picture that um is you sort of eating ice cream on the pier it's probably not gonna you know come across as professional um as a nice headshot um of some kind so um, I'd really just think about your LinkedIn profile um, and ensure that it really sort of mirrors your CV because again um, your CV might look amazing and then the employers decided you know yes let's you know have a look on the LinkedIn side of things and suddenly there's a contradiction maybe um, of a job that's on your CV that isn't maybe on your LinkedIn page or it could create some confusion and some questions which again could in a competitive market um, mean your CV sort of ends up at you know the bottom of the pile which is not what you want um, so just yeah taking the time to look at your uh, LinkedIn profile but we're going to do a webinar in a few weeks on kind of online presence so it'd be great for you guys to attend that we can go into more detail 
Thanks, Matt. Yeah, that's really important. So many photos on LinkedIn. You see a, a lovely, you know, having a cocktail on the beach in your yeah. summer holiday. But yeah, I think the, the, the just slicker and more professional, I think, is easier. Um, okay, the next um, bit that we want to talk about is the um, professional summary. So you can see we've done a, a summary on the CV and it's, it's quite detailed. I think it's four paragraphs long. This could be the first piece of content that the recruiter will really read about you. And it, it's, this is your opportunity to really grab the reader's attention. So I would advise using this space to really highlight your skills, your experience, and talk about why you're right for the opportunity. So try to avoid kind of generic statements. For example, I am a punctual, hardworking candidate. I'm a team player. That's all useful, but most people put that in their CV. So maybe change it to something like, um, this is how I can demonstrate skills that relate to this role, or I'm utterly focused on the difference that I can make with my contribution. Something really specific, um, something a little bit different. Um, you can also highlight in here if you've been traveling, if you've done some volunteering. This is kind of your showcase to talk about you professionally, personally, what skills you've gained and, and whatever kind of um, situation that may be that's, that's relevant and that highlights different things about you. So um, I love reading people's summaries. It always tells you a lot um, about the person. So take time with this bit and, and detail it. Fab. Thanks, Lucy. OK, um, so the next area. Oh, yeah. Sorry, just to say um, on that. Um, Do you want to go back? Yeah, I mentioned traveling and volunteering. Sorry, I covered the bit I wanted to cover. Over to you now. Sorry. OK, no, no worries. Thank you. Um, OK, yeah, so we're just going to go into kind of going about uh, talking about the career history and experience, qualifications, education and training and then um, hobbies. Okay, so um, career oh, history, sorry. if you go through your career history in um, chronological order, so you can see on the, on the right hand page what we've done is put the job title and then we've put the company name and the dates that you were employed and then underneath that just a brief description on the company because the reader, the recruiter may not know what your company does, may not know they're an SME or they're a global law firm or a financial services firm. So just put a one or two lines on what the company does. That's always really helpful. Um, and then we put kind of five or six bullet points around your responsibility, your duties. Um, be detailed here uh, and be factual um, and try and avoid anything that's too technical or too specific to the industry you work in now if you're applying to something outside of that industry. So, um, let it keep it generic keep it fairly easy for the reader to understand um, and then as i've touched on before we put a subheading with achievements so just two or three bullet points what you achieved in that role um, it, as i say it could be increasing productivity it could be a new process whatever you feel you've achieved it's it's good to highlight it there um, and then ending with your reason for leaving so be professional and um, be factual don't be negative. Um, for example, things like I didn't like my boss or I was given too much work to do or I was asked to stay late two nights a week. Avoid it. Um, just keep it simple. Keep it positive is the best way to go. Fab. And yeah, just um, I see a lot of um, in the career history, a lot of acronyms, you know, um, abbreviations for things that is a language that other uh, well, employers might not be familiar with, so definitely think um, avoiding those is key. Yeah. Um, okay, so, sorry, Lucy. Yeah, qualifications, education and training. You yes. Can chat about that. Yeah, I'll um, just give a little bit of a flavour on, on what we feel is really important here. So, um, again, it might seem obvious, but education, um, you know, university, which university you went to, um, what we sometimes find, um, particularly more recently, if um, the individual is a graduate and has been to university, they sometimes um, don't sort of put their education uh, further back as in kind of GCSEs, A-levels. Um, and what school you went to. So it is really important. Well, we feel it is, don't we, Lucy? We love to see what schools yeah. people have gone to. Oh, the, the schools that people have gone to, the universities that you've gone to, the 
GCSEs that you did, the A levels that you did, I think it's all really relevant and kind of paints that overall picture as to how your your journey has gone right from your early education. I've had a few conversations this week where clients have said, "And what GCSEs did they get? And what were the grades in their A levels?" Um, recruiters like to see that. Clients like to see that. So it's definitely worth taking the time to put that in there. Yeah, and equally training is really important. You know, any further qualifications or training courses that you've attended, um, you know, it could be, um, you know, a simple thing like Microsoft Excel, um, definitely put those in, even if it's internal training within the organization that you've worked, if it's relevant, if it's relevant to the employer and the role you're applying for, 100% um, put those training courses in. It demonstrates, again, initiative, desire to kind of want to kind of better yourself, um, focused approach, you know. Um, so I think um, certainly training is as equally important um, as education. Um, and then sort of um, dates, we've talked about this actually. Some people don't put their dates in which they attended school um, or uh, further education. That's fine. Um, we, we don't, personally, it's up to the individual. You don't have to put the dates on there. Um, not essential. Um, so then hobbies and interests. Um, so the fun bit, really. Um, mm -hmm. Your CV is naturally, you know, going to be so focused around sort of the professional side of things. Um, and yes, yeah, so it should be. But the hobbies and interests is really the, the opportunity to kind of get um, your the real you across. And we love it when we're reading CVs. Um, you know, uh, we, we definitely find it important to kind of go through that personal professional summary. Love to read that. And then, you know, sometimes I'll go straight onto the hobbies and interests because I want to get a feel for the individual um and who who they are and what they're about but there's sort of nothing more disappointing than seeing that generic kind of reading socializing with friends um just really um thinking about you know different types of hobbies and interests that are going to kind of set you apart and get you across so it could be things like um you know um, charity fundraising events that you've done you may have done sort of walks or marathons to raise money um obviously that um says a lot about um, an individual so worth highlighting here um but then it could be sporting um activities it might be that you know um even something when you were younger you were competing at quite high standard um put it in you know and you may just be doing it more recreationally now but worth highlighting because it says again a lot about your skills in a way um i think we've we feel it demonstrates we've got a client yeah. of ours um, that we recruit for um account managers and salespeople, and they love to see sporting achievements they ask us yeah. specifically ask that question of our candidates what have they achieved from a sporting perspective um yeah. were they a team player were they an individual sports player it, it says a lot but even things like at the moment baking is huge and cake decorating yeah. All those really intricate things, crafting is, is a big thing. I think crafting and cake decorating, uh, people that do that are really organized, I think. So um, I love to see all guide leaders, guide leaders are brilliant as well. So, yeah. you know, the more, the more different, the better. Put it on your CV, as Nat says, it showcases you as a person, which is what people want to see. They want to see you as well as the professional you. It's so important. Definitely. Um, and it might be a common interest with the employer, you know, so yeah, it might the just get them excited. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so language that you should use to enhance your CV. So we've put two sets of words here. The top set is um, the standout words. These words, I think, are, are pretty um What's expected? Pretty much what's expected, really. What most people have. I'm surprised we haven't got passionate on there, actually. Passionate is a word I would take off um, your CV. It's so overused. Um, but all of these words are good. Flexibility, adaptability, initiative, attention to detail, self-motivated, multitasker. They're all good, but they're all really commonly used. So what we try to think is some different kind of words and, and verbs and talk around why we think they're important and what difference they can give to you so that's going to um, chat through those a little bit with you yeah okay so kind of what we're uh, what we mean by this is definitely you know with the words such so i'm just going to pluck out a few here um of the power verbs um 
the managed side of things so this using this sort of language within your cv really sort of demonstrates where you've taken that full responsibility for something um, so it's a really great thing to sort of get across um, another um, example being kind of reduced um, so you might have um, you know looked um, at something like a previously sort of labor intensive administration task which the business were spending you know laborious amounts of time on um, and you've then kind of come up with a solution to reduce that kind of um, time spent on that which may have impacted the business in a really positive way as in you know cost saving um, it might have uh, reduced headcount um, because of you know a solution that you've kind of come up with um, so really good language to use and a good sort of strong words to get across um, negotiated um, yeah, I think negotiated, you know, in the sense of the word kind of means, you know, you have potentially saved the money company, uh, money, sorry, company money, you may mm -hmm. have um, come up with, you know, some sort of cost saving, uh, you've negotiated new rates with um, suppliers um, that may well have, you know, saved uh, a significant amount of money. So getting those examples across um, on your CV or using those kind of power verbs are really important. Um, executed, um, it's actually not on here, but one that I sort of um, looked at um, earlier or came across. I think if you've executed, you've handled, say, you know, high call volume um, number of customers daily. Um, so you might work in a kind of um, customer focused role, telephone based role where you're receiving 20 to 50 calls a day um, and you've sort of problem solved you know you've dealt with and executed all of those um, inquiries that are coming through um, so just really thinking about kind of these words here um, and how impactful they can be you can get a lot of information on this online as well sorry Lucy I like yeah I'm just sorry now to interrupt you I just want to right. say I like supported because I like thinking that you're supporting teams or colleagues or managers and really yeah. giving hints of that because that shows initiative but it shows that you're a team player and it shows that you care and you really want to add value so I think any examples where you've supported a process an individual a team a manager is is so important yeah absolutely um, another one actually that I um wanted to emphasize was developed you know you might have developed a new process um, businesses love you know that process uh, business process improvement um, so again you might have you know it could be a computer filing system that um, you've taken from you know uh, you've reduced the amount of paper uh, the business um, is using you may have reduced it by a significant percentage um, so developed um, reduced, managed, all of these words, really, you know, think about those and spend the time kind of having a look um, at power verbs. You can get some really good information online. So I, they're almost talking points, aren't they? They're words that you can look at and think, right, how can I relate that to my current job or my last job? And um, yeah, they're, they're prompters, I think. Um, so yeah, really good things to have a look at. And we've got that on our website, you said, haven't you now? We've got that on our blog, so you can refer to that. Yes. Definitely worth having a look at the blog for sure. Um, okay. Fab. So. Okay. So. Yeah. Sorry, Lucy. Go ahead. This is over to you definitely for this bit because machine learning is more your bag than mine. <laughs> well, it, I think it's kind of ever evolving and it's it's new for a lot of us um, in a way. You know, especially well, I've been in recruitment fifteen years and you know it's. Um, change quite dramatically with technology um, and I think we're going to see even more sort of significant change here so what do we mean by machine learning um, so making sure your CV really stands out from um, the, the computer the AI um, not just the hiring management hiring managers um, so artificial intelligence is what we mean by sort of AI I'm sure you're familiar with it or becoming more so um, so those are yeah. that's, 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 Talk a little bit about it for those that aren't. Yeah, absolutely. I'll um, just give you a, a bit of an example of it, really. So um, there's um, recruitment platforms out there now which will scan your CV. So it'll scan it based on kind of keywords. 
So again, it just almost reinforces everything we've talked about today in terms of those language skills, power verbs, um, everything in terms of hard skills, you know, getting that across on your CV. And um, where it's really sort of important is, you know, if, for example, you're applying for a job online and it say, um, you know, it says in the job title project management, um, it might seem obvious, but if that word is not sort of um, relatable in your CV or it's not kind of worded in the same way where you might have put project managed or something like that it's just really thinking about how you mirror kind of what is in that job specification um, because it will these computers and platforms will sort of scan your CV for those words to make suggestions to employers as to you know suitable matches to their job um, so for us um, in recruitment, um, we use the LinkedIn recruiter platform. Um, so there's some really clever tools on there where, you know, we'll put a job advert up and depending what sort of contents within that job ad, um, advert, basically it will create an immediate sort of short list of profile matches. So it's scanned your um, profile um, and CV or any words within that profile. And then it sort of prompted us as uh, recruiters to view your your CV or profile online. Um, so yeah, it's it's really quite technical, um, very sort of robotic, but um, it's gonna become more prevalent in time. So be sure to kind of consider this going forward. I think we're gonna talk more about that in weeks to come, aren't we? Yes, we are definitely. I think it's probably gonna be relevant to our online presence webinar, um, yeah. which we're gonna be doing. So look out for that. Okay, and then, um, so you now have your CD. You have an amazing document. It looks brilliant. Um, you spent a lot of time on it. Um, don't let yourself down with um, typos. So go through it for spelling, um, grammar, punctuation, accuracy. Um, make sure there are no gaps, or if there are gaps, that's absolutely fine, but just explain them. I'm yeah. a massive um, recruiter for honesty in every area of, of your CV and what you do. So um, if you've had some time out for whatever reason, just talk about it um, and make it clear. Um, so yeah, just look at the, the grammar, the punctuation, your wording, make sure you've not missed any words out. Um, proofread it really carefully yourself and then give it to a partner, friend, or family member that you live with um, for them to give you some really honest feedback on it. But just that fine tuning of it at the end of the document is, is super important. And you should now have a CV that you can be so proud of and that will give you the best possible chances um, going forward in your career. So thank you guys. Thank you for coming on board and joining us today. We hope it's been helpful and we hope it's given you something to think about and to, to take forward. Yeah, thanks everybody. Um, again, hopefully you found it useful. Um, so thanks so much for attending and hopefully we'll see you on some of our future webinars. Um, <clears throat> so now it's over to the questions. Um, so as Christina explained earlier, um, I think there may have been a, a potential glitch. So hopefully um, we'll start receiving some of those questions now um, from you guys. Yeah, thanks. Now, thanks, Lucy. Um, we've had some questions sent through over email throughout the, the webinar and some really great feedback as well. And um, so thanks everyone for that feedback for, for Nat and Lucy. Um, it sounds very much so everyone's found it really beneficial um, and informative. Um, we do have some questions for you. Um, so I'll start off with the first question. Uh, what do I put in a cover letter to support my CV application? So the, the cover letter or the cover email um, is, is really important, especially if you're going from um, one industry or one job to something that's quite different. And I think in, in that situation, it's just highlighting what skills you've gained so far that are transferable. And there are so many of those. So just thinking about what you've done in your job that you think could be used well in a, in a new role. So if you're moving from an admin role, maybe into a HR role, thinking about the communication, the organization, um, the IT skills, generic skills that, that are widely used, but then also talking about why you want to move into that area, what research have you done, what your understanding of it is, so that the reader can see that you've really thought about this and you understand what's involved and highlighting that within your cover email or your cover letter, really. Um, so again, just talking about 
why it's of interest to you, why you feel right, you're right for it, and what skills you've gained that can transfer into that kind of role. Great, thank you. Uh, next question. Do you have advice specifically for graduate CVs? So those who maybe have limited employment history or experience in a specific field? Matt, do you want to? Yeah. Have you got any yeah. on that? I could, we can, um, I'm sure we can go collaborative on this one. Um, but I think, um, you know, what to kind of include is I would suggest, you know, if there's anything that you've done in terms of sandwich year, obviously really, really important to put the emphasis on that. So um, if that's something that you did even, you know, for um, a period of time, get that at the top of the CV. So, you know, you've highlighted your qualifications and really kind of going into maybe more detail about what you did within that role. So when we've talked through the CV today, you know, we've talked about kind of keeping certain job uh, jobs a little bit more succinct. Um, you might want to add more bullet points. Um, but also things like, you know, working throughout your education. I think if you've done that and it has been in um, retail, I think that really demonstrates a lot and says a lot about an individual. You know, if you have been able to do that, maybe to fund your uh, education, um, I think, you know, even the retail side of things is worth highlighting for sure. Mm. Um, I think so internships. I mean, my, we, uh, my son is uh, about to graduate this year and um, we've always said to him, get as much voluntary experience as you can and internship experience. And especially after this, when COVID-19 is over and people are returning to the workplace, try and get out there for one or two or three weeks intern work in whatever area you want to do. Um, and now that you've got this amazing CV, get it out there um, and follow it up. The most important thing that I love is when I receive a CV, the next day I receive a call um, from that candidate. Did you get my yeah. CV? I wanted to pull it up. That yeah. initiative is so important. Don't always wait for the employer to come back to you. Push it forward um, and use that initiative. So I think any work experience that you can highlight as a graduate, anything that you've done, any volunteering that you can think about doing, um, put it all on your CV. Great. Uh, another question, uh, someone maybe a bit further on in their career, um, how far back on your CV should you go if you have been working for, say, around 30 years? How much should you include on your CV? I think it depends how many jobs you've had. So if yeah. um, if you've had, you know, one or two jobs, then that's probably easier. If you've had a lot of jobs, it's personal preference, really. Um, and it depends how relevant the jobs are more recently. Um, I would probably say go back a minimum of, of six to eight years and maybe a maximum of 10 to 12 depending on the roles that you've had but if, if you're if you're applying for example for a, a HR management role now and the last two jobs that you've had have been more generalist but the job before that was HR management and that maybe 10 years ago then I think you should keep that in because that's yeah. showing that you exposure to HR earlier in your career so I think it depends on the role that you're applying for and what you've done. Um, but I like to see as much detail as I can, but I don't think there's any need to go back to the, the 80s really, or, or the 90s possibly. So try and keep it relevant to the job that you're applying for. But I also find it frustrating the other end, if there's only two or three years or four years, I want to see more than that. Yeah, and I think, um... Thanks, Susie. I, I definitely think, you know, the CV is to get you the interview so you can tell a bit more of your story when you're in that interview. So, you know, keeping really? it, um, yeah, those sort of 10 years around that mark. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, another question. How difficult is it to demonstrate transferable skills and suitability for a role when you're applying for a role you have no prior experience for? So I think this is in relation to maybe a career move changing career direction? I had this question recently for a teacher and who was um, coming out of teaching and wants to move into something different. And, and I said, again, it's it's about the cover email, the cover letter, but also the CV. So I think in, in the cover letter, um, you know, he's worked as a teacher, but all the skills that come from that, so communication, standing in front of a classroom, presenting every day, um, not being afraid to present the detail in kind of um, marking and, and the preparation of homework and things like that. So it's it's taking out, again, those transferable skills that will be relatable to the role that you're applying for 
um, and just pulling those across really. So thinking of communication, organisation, um, any tasks that you've had that relate to that. And again, the research that you've done in that, in that area. So if you're applying for a completely new job in a new sector, why? Why does that appeal to you? And I was yeah. put in my email, um, whilst I'm a teacher now, the reason I want to move into this is having researched it, this is my understanding of what this role will involve. And these are the yeah. skills that, have that relate to that. So kind of outlining what it involves and then selling back why you're right for it. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Lucy. Um, another question, how would you present a number of short-term temporary roles on a CV? How would you present that? I um, personally think, you know, um, you could just summarise it in a way of, depends if you say you've worked for one agency for some time, you could kind of put Lucy Walker recruitment from whatever date to, to whatever date and list the types of roles that you've done, um, you know, during that time as a temporary worker. Um, so. I definitely think if the bullet points are relevant or you know what you've gained within those temporary roles highlight that um but you don't want to be put in kind of you know if it's a week here and two weeks there and, and before you know it you've got a list of 10 different companies which take up you know um a whole or half a page of your cv you could just put kind of tempt from such a day to such a day and list the types of roles that you did during that time um because you know you, you're highlighting why you're relevant for the role and again the interview will hopefully allow you the opportunity to talk through what you've done within those roles um would you add anything to that lucy i think the only thing i would add is if it was a long period of time that you tempt for so if you tempt for a year i would maybe start it by saying during this period of time i decided to work on a temporary basis because and whatever the reason is um, and yeah. i enjoyed it i wanted to gain more experience um, whatever the reason is, just kind of highlighting that in a little bit of a summary at the top. There were a number yeah. of roles I had and I've, I've outlined below the skills and experience I gained within these roles. So it's not a negative, it's, it's you know, it's a positive. It's great experience in different environments, yeah. different cultures, different yeah. skill sets. So again, sell it, sell it as a positive. Yeah. Absolutely, because actually tempi, temping can, you know, you can build some really strong commercial acumen and skills by being in those different environments. Um, you know, so having that exposure is, you know, often a really good thing, but it's just, it, well, it's justifying that to the potential employer, um, you know, on your CV, <clears throat> like Lucy said. Great, thank you. There's been a couple of similar questions um, around professional photo. I know you touched on this in terms of the, the LinkedIn profile, but a few questions about whether you should have a professional photo on your CV and one in particular has come through um, someone from Canada. It's quite big practice over there. So they're asking in terms of UK practice in relation to this. It's a big no, no for me, I'm afraid. Um, and I don't mean that in, in, in any other way. I just think it. some people will make a judgment from the photo and I think it's it's better to judge on the skills and the experience and, and what the person does rather than what they look like. And I, I don't think it's needed, really. I just don't. Uh, yeah, I would just leave them out. It doesn't affect me when I'm selecting a CV. I almost disregard the photo because I would rather read the content of about the person and what they've put and how they've communicated, how they've written it. I think there is so much more that you can put within a CV that highlights you and showcases you than a photo. That's personal, it's really personal there, but that's my personal opinion. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, it, it is a bit of a subjective thing, isn't it? I think, like you say, different countries have probably different practices with it. Um, mm -hmm. But I, like Lucy, do feel like it sort of detracts from, you know, I like to read the CV um, and start to imagine the individual a little bit. It's just maybe it's something personal to us, but I I do think it can sort of take away and you know um like you say um people can you know it, it's just another thing to sort of judge on I think probably just keeping it um as we've outlined today is how I would recommend you doing it probably because for me it's really rare I think probably nine out of ten CVs don't have a photo um so um, it's just not something I'm used to or have been used to maybe that will change as, as we go on but I think it's more about the written piece your CV should be a written piece 
Thank you. Um, another question, um, should I put my age, marital status, dependence information, personal information like that on my CV? No, I don't think so. Um, it's, I don't think it's needed. Um, unless you want to talk about your children and, and um, you know, in your hobbies, that, that may well come into it. For so many people it does, family time is so important. So I think do it then, but I think otherwise, no, it's, it's again, it's not relevant. Agreed. Okay. Um, okay, another question. How do you highlight and explain career breaks on your CV? I think just be really honest about them. Um, and again, I think career breaks can be a real positive, whatever that may be. It could be that you're moving house. It could be that you're taking some time out to travel. It could be that you're just having a break. Um, I think you've just got to be honest about them. I think it's worse if you don't acknowledge it. Um, yeah. So if there is a gap between two roles, I think just putting something short in the middle um, from March to May, I had two months out for whatever reason it may be. Um, just being having that clarity, really, I think it's really important to, to just be really honest and open about that. Thank you. And um, if I have four or five jobs, do I still need to put my exam grades on? So if I've got a four or five job history of my experience, should I have my, my exam grades on as well? I, I'm happy to answer that. I think um, in terms of grades, you don't necessarily need to list all of your grades, I don't think. You know, it depends, really. If it's definitely worth showcasing, I would highlight them for sure. Um, but if it's that you've obtained um, a certain amount of, say, GCSEs, um, or um, A levels, then you, you could list it that way. Um, but I think if you've got the grades, if you've done well um, in your education, you know, why wouldn't you want to sort of shout about it? Um, but you don't need to go into loads of detail if, you know, your career's sort of evolved and your skills are more relevant to um, the job that you're going for at this point. I agree. I think GCSE grades aren't so needed unless they're amazing. If you've got all A's and A's stars, gosh, put them down there. Um, but yeah, generally, I think A level grades people like to see. I still think people like to, recruiters like to see GCSE subjects to see what range you've got. Um, A level subjects and grades, degree and degree classification. Uh, two one first two two. Um, I think put it on there. A lot of people don't put two two, and I think they should because two two is still really good. So you know you've achieved a degree, you've studied hard for it for three years. Um, so you know put it on there. It's a, a great achievement. Thank you. Okay, we've just got time for one more question. Um, so, question is, um, I have dyslexia. Would this be something I would need to state on my CV? Um, it doesn't cause me huge issues, but it does change the way I think and see um, and interpret things compared to others. So, is this something to be disclosed on a CV? I think it's a discussion for interview. I don't think it's a, I don't think it's a point to, to raise on your CV. I think it's something that you can discuss on a face-to-face -face basis when you're in front of someone um, so my advice would be no um, I don't think so and again it's something that you can turn into a positive in an interview situation in that you're so thorough you've got those um, skills um, that you've learned throughout your dyslexia and that make you a, an incredibly thorough person with strong attention to detail that's my understanding of it so I would leave it from your CV and then turn it into a positive in the interview situation Right, thank you. And that's all the questions we've, we've got time for, um, but we can um, obviously feedback the one-to-one -one, uh, CV consultations for those that request. We've already had a couple come through uh, on email. So thanks, Lucy. Thanks, Nat. Yeah, great questions. Thanks, guys. Really good questions. And Nat and I are really happy to have a conversation with any of you. So do email in and um, one of us can give you a call and have a chat if you want to have any further discussions on things. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, thanks. But yeah, thanks for joining today. Thank you for your time.